Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. For today's video, I want to give you a summary and my takeaways from a recent appearance by Elon Musk just today with Morgan Stanley that gave us a lot of detail about where Twitter is today, as well as some helpful tidbits around Tesla, SpaceX, and other things as well. A lot of new information, actually. I really want to get you caught up. Uh, we'll get started right away. Today, I'm going to use a rocket for my pointer because rockets are cool and SpaceX and all that stuff. Um, so one of the things we learned at this meeting is that after acquisition, Twitter was four months away from bankruptcy. It had very severe cash burn. Uh, this is because of big costs associated to the company. And as we all know, Twitter lost a lot of ad revenue once Elon Musk took over because of some of the uncertainty around brand safety and other things as well. It was essentially four months away from going under after Elon Musk purchased it. However, we did learn that as of today, Twitter is EBITDA profitable, which takes away uh, interest, uh, depreciation, amortization, and taxes away from the profitability. Not the best way to measure profitability, but it was something that was shared on the call by Morgan Stanley by one of their analysts. However, the bigger thing here is that Elon Musk shared that cash flow is possible to be positive starting in Q2 2023, which is only three months away. So this might be a surprise to many that have been following the Twitter story that were thinking this company was going to be a huge drag for a really long time. The guidance that Elon gave on this call is that Twitter could be, uh, they said, let's not count our uh, uh, chickens too early before they hatch, but it could be cash flow positive by next quarter, which bodes really well for that company's ability to generate cash and profits for its investors. Uh, this is mostly due because of a reduction in costs, 60% uh, reduction in workforce, uh, probably a little bit more since Elon Musk took over. Uh, they also moved away from three data centers to two data centers, so that obviously uh, will reduce costs as well. Uh, and one of the stats that they shared is that as of today, uh, Twitter is averaging about 130 million human hours of usage per day which sounds like a lot to me. That uh, that amount of hours is being monetized at about five cents per hour with a goal of 20 cents per hour uh, of, of monetization. Uh, and I think this is one of the things that really highlights just how much potential there is with the platform. Not very monetizable, not monetizable now, but it could be dramatically monetizable, up to four times more monetizable uh, once Twitter and the, uh, and the executive team there puts things in place. Uh, if you're liking this content so far, I would love it if you throw me a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. There's also been a 99% reduction in child sexual exploitation searches, which is, was, uh, it's, it seems like, based on the guidance that we were given on the call, it's, it's one of Twitter's top priorities, if not very close to number, number one priority. This obviously is a huge deal for those that are really uh, worried about things that shouldn't be shared on the platform uh, being shared. So this is a, a big change from where the platform was before. Uh, and there's also uh, one of the things that was highlighted was that there's growth in user base. Uh, so the amount of users that were added every single month, even with a 40% reduction in cloud spend. So they're reducing their cloud spend. So basically how much money they invest in keeping those data centers and places where they can store data by 40%, but they can still take on more users. So they're becoming more efficient with uh, essentially their cloud, uh, the way they manage their cloud. Uh, they also share that Disney and Apple are both two of Twitter's largest advertisers as of today, and they gave them a big thanks on the call. Twitter will also introduce keyword-based advertising uh, sometime this year, and this uh, level of advertising will be relevant advertising by the end of the year. So it seems like there's a lot of low-hanging fruit around ads. Some of you may already know that when uh, before Elon bought the company, Twitter ads, just you just bought an ad and it showed it to everybody. It wasn't really keyword or targeted. The goal is by the end of the year, it'll be both uh, keyword and targeted as well, which should increase uh, Twitter's ability to make money on advertising. Long term of Twitter is to be the biggest financial institution. So th this was around the sort of whole concept of X.com and more of the long-term vision of the company. Right now, it's obviously just focused on, on, on news, social media-like aspects, but long-term, their vision is to really make it the biggest financial institution in the world. Uh, shortly followed by, you'll see. <laughs> there was Elon Musk didn't want to give a lot of detail. He said, you'll see, which is kind of like, 
okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> what are you planning? So that's interesting. Uh, Twitter is uh, an easier problem than Tesla by long shot is something that Elon Musk shared on the call as well. Really framing that, hey, it's still a very challenging thing, but as compared to Tesla's complexity, Twitter is significantly easier. It doesn't require nearly as much um, I guess, complexity or decision-making as a Tesla would do to its size and an entire supply chain that has to be managed most likely. Uh, and there was a question around how long will it take to build an executive team? Elon said it will take a few years. Tesla took 20, but he thinks that it will take much less than that for Twitter, which was also very interesting to learn. And then there was some questions around Tesla and SpaceX as well. And these are some new things that I think we've, we've learned. The Tesla compact car, which within the context of being added as a robo taxi car, as a self-driving car, the total addressable market as viewed by Elon and the Tesla team is every human on planet Earth. So that's how they're thinking about this compact car with robo taxi capability is that this thing is meant to serve the entire planet, every single person. And so the expectation here should be for this Gen 3 platform to permeate the planet. <laughs> it shouldn't just be a developed nation thing. It should be something that every single person on planet Earth over time will take obviously decades to get there. But that's the grand vision of this platform, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Starlink could also be a better solution than fiber. One of the things that was mentioned is that with Starlink, they're aiming to get at 20 millisecond latency on the, on the service. And the reason why they think it's going to be better than fiber is because with fiber, you have to have a bunch of cables around the planet. With Starlink, you just beam from ground to satellite and then satellite to satellite and then back down to the ground. So you have a much uh, straighter line to the place that you're seeking information from. So that's how they think it's going to be a better solution than fiber long term as they build out the network. Starship orbital test within two months, uh, within a month, excuse me, reusability within two years, which again, this is sort of the grandiose vision is, hey, this is going to be incredibly important for advancing and making humanity multiplanetary. And they think they're about two years away from making that happen with rapid and full reusability uh, with the Starship uh, rocket. And so here are my here are really my my big takeaways from from this th whole thing, and I think it's really starting to paint a certain picture that we hear a lot of things in the news about Elon Musk, Twitter, Tesla, all these things, but it's starting to become clear, at least to me. And I love to hear your opinions in the comments. Real quick before I get into that, if you want to join the channel, I have a, a button right below the, this, uh, the video here. You can become a member, and uh, you gain access to exclusive con content every Friday. And if you'd like to support the channel, we'd really appreciate that. Of course, you don't have to. Uh, basically, all my content's free. You can also support the channel by buying some merch, just like the shirt I'm wearing right now. Thank you very much. And if you'd like uh, to a coupon for Athletic Greens, which is a supplement I use every single morning, and, I, and I've been doing so for years, that I have a coupon for that in the description as well. So one of the biggest takeaways for me is that Twitter's about to make people money and money talks. And really from the beginning, I don't think uh, really the messaging was, you know, it was really around freedom of speech. This is super, super important, but it's still a business. And we're on the cusp, it seems, if, if the next quarter guidance becomes true, uh, that Twitter will start becoming a actual legitimate investment that will have returns for people. And it will be a place for advertisers to advertise their products, which will allow those people to make a lot of money. So that's going to create a certain type of attention on the platform that I think is going to shift the tone a little bit uh, as it pertains to this platform being a successful thing. So a lot of people that may have doubted the purchase, if Twitter ends up being a legitimate investment from a profitability perspective, I would expect that tone to shift uh, because hey, this is yet another thing Elon Musk has done from a business perspective that has become uh, successful. So I, I expect that to be the case. Well, we'll see where it goes, though. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well on that. Um, what was the previous management doing? <laughs> I don't know. It, it's just, yeah. I, it seems odd that he would be able to buy it for $44 billion, take out a ton of debt, very risky debt, uh, lose half its advertising, and then he's able to go in, uh, let go of 60% plus of the workforce, reduce your data centers by 33%, create all kinds of hate around yourself and other people. Of course, on the other side, uh, you'll have people that really love it. But now we're on the cusp of it becoming cash flow positive, which means it's going to be generating cash instead of losing cash. Okay. I'm not going to say anything else. So Real quickly, let's summarize where Twitter is today. So more than 60% workforce reduction from three data centers to two, user growth month over month, 
The CSC searches, those child sexual exploitation searches are reduced by 99%. And uh, it's now on the cusp of being cash flow positive by Q2 2023. And so I think if if this comes to fruition, if cash flow positive becomes uh, a reality next quarter, I expect the the nature of the discussion around Twitter being a good or bad investment for Elon to change towards to be much more positive because it's going to be something that people will gravi- gravitate towards because it's a successful business. It's making people money. It's going to make advertisers money and it's going to make uh, people that are using the service uh, theoretically happier because it's something that more and more people are using theoretically. You know, social media is, is a very complex, weird thing. And I myself, I'm quite torn about how good is it for society? How bad is it for society? But I think success speaks for itself. And with the track record of Elon Musk with Tesla and SpaceX, and now it's about to be Twitter, looks like in the next quarter or two, I think that's going to be yet another feather in the cap of Mr. Elon Musk about his successful ventures. And just uh, when he sets his mind on something, and it seems like he has a pretty good track record of making it happen. But we'll see. We'll see if it comes to fruition or not. Uh, let's not count the Uh, chickens before they hatch, I guess, as as he said. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you found this helpful, I would love it if you throw me a like, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. I hope this was informative and valuable.